Hello, welcome to ACE Online and welcome to today's session of Current Affairs from 18th January. Uh, so this is our first session as a live as uh, we have already released a video that we will be having a daily Current Affairs sessions. From today's various news articles, just a second, yeah. Yeah, so we have a coverage of these seven articles from today's various newspapers and PIB. First one is annual status of education report. So we have a report released by some NGO. We will see who are all involved. That is the first one and the data is also very important for our exams. Then the international news, the Iran strikes Pakistan. Uh, yesterday Iran has you know released that they have striking that certain areas in the Pakistan, we will see what is the issue, what are all the you know facts that need to be covered for our exams. Next, cervical cancer, so there is a science and technology related article which is relevant for our exam. Next, Asian Buddhist Conference for Peace, which is going to happen in India. Uh, so this is also important for any of the competitive exams related to the culture or history, right? Then Cyber Surakshit Bharat Initiative, there is an initiative of the government of India, we will see what is the details. The India International Science Festival of 2023. So we'll see what are all the facts related to that. And we have some one or two facts which are also maybe asked in the exams, right? So first article, annual status of education report 2023. So it is a report. That means some data is there, some study has been conducted, some survey has been conducted and there was some results, uh, you know, released from this report. So the context is this. Why it is there in news? The ASR report titled. So you need to remember the title as well. What is the title of this year as a report? Beyond Basics. So you can see that there is uh, some clue. Beyond Basics. That means after certain age or certain basic elements, we have certain things. So we'll see what is those basic beyond basics. So before going to the actual data that is released by the ASR report, we need to know the background. What is actually the ASR report? That is very important. So this ASR report is survey. It is like, you know, collecting data, household survey. So this is important here. Household survey. That means the data is co collected at the house level or the home level. It is not the at the school level. That is very important. It is a data collected from each of the households and who is going to conduct this or who has been conducted this it is a non-government organization named Pratham so it is not a government report it is a NGO non-governmental organization that is named Pratham so this is the report or the organization which is handling this report they have been surveying children aged between 16 to 14 so since 2005 they are collecting the data related to the children who are studying from 6 years to 14 years, right? So this is very important. They are conducting data related to, collecting data related to the 6 to 14 years age. And what is the aim? Why they are conducting this uh, survey? So they aim to track trends in the school enrollment, attendance and reading and arithmetic abilities. So each children or child has different different capabilities and each region within uh, you know India we have different states and within states we have different regions how the enrollment is happening between the genders between the ages how they are you know able to understand the concept all these data are being surveyed by the Pratham ng one they are putting in form of report so this is the basic elements about the report coming to this year report so there are certain changes in this year report which are also relevant for our exam this year survey 2023 have focused on 14 to 18 years old age. See, earlier it was collecting data from 6 to 14 years. Now this year they have collected the data from 14 to 18 years. That means higher secondary education. This is very uh, you know important observation from this uh, 2023 report. And specifically on ability to apply reading. So how they can read, right? And math, math skills to everyday situations and their aspirations. So they have collected the data from 14 to 18 years related to how they can solve the maths, how they can read given you know book or given subject and how what are their aspirations, what they want to become in future. Whether you want to become a teacher, whether you want to become a doctor. So what are all the aspirations that were there among the age group of 14, 18. So this is the objective of the report. 
they also sought to capture the access related to digital technology after like covid we have a lot of digital penetration across the education right like mobile phones or tabs or maybe e technology so what are the technology that was being you know uh, deployed after covid so they they are estimating how this digital technology is impacting or affecting the children from age group of 14 18 so that is other important feature of the report now the title we have already discussed that beyond basics survey was carried out among 34745 young respondents you no need to worry about uh, you know remembering this uh, digit how many people has been collected this is not relevant but just understand the credibility that means it is a huge number 34000 more than 34000 young children that means the report is credible that we can conclude especially in the rural districts covering 26 states so they have covered 26 states uh, states and uh, covering the rural district it is not the urban area so this is again important observation that their data collected is from rural districts and they have collected uh, four important uh, broad criteria one is activity that means what the children are doing um, between the 14 to 18 years age what the children are doing the activity under aspiration so what they want to do in the future so that is also important awareness in general so how are they aware about the current issues or the their health or whatever may be so general awareness they have uh, you know estimated and their ability ability to read calculate so whatever may be what are the capabilities of the children so these are the four broad criteria which they have surveyed next so we'll see some of the observations which are important for our exams quickly so we'll uh, stress the important thing you no need to worry about remembering all the facts from the report it is a huge report so we have compiled certain facts right so you can observe here those who have their own smartphones so of each children from 14 to 18 who has their own smartphones that means they are not dependent on any other one so you can see with the increase in the age group that means 14 to 18 so there is an increase in the percentage of having their own smartphone so of course with the increase in the age there is a more utility of the smartphones so this observation they may ask in the exam so again within males and females so this is a green one so here is also there is a increase and when you compare between the genders so female and male so see you can see the percentage utility of mobiles or smartphones is more among the males when we compare to the female so is this a good or bad so there is two way uh, you know consequences but in general you can see that there is a patriarchy among the indian education system patriarchy means seeing difference uh, roles among the genders like women has to do this particular thing or men has to do or uh, you know males has to do this particular thing so that is the role differentiation between the genders so that is called as patriarchy and you can observe that males are given more smartphones that means the education is being promoted among the males when we compare to the female so this is one of the important observations we need to correct this so males or female students should be equally put in same criteria or same percentage so that's how the education equality can be promoted so this is one good observation from the report and it gives solution right if you know the issue again the government or some other uh, entities who are involved will come up with the solutions few more observations children in, among the age group of 14 to 18 they are doing multiple things that means they are not just focusing on education core education they are doing more activities like you know uh, getting into the sports or doing even the small jobs here there is one point the 30% of a uh, students among 14 to 18 age group are already working with their parents so that means family shops or family small labors so already children were involved with the parents 30% this is a bad sign that we need to reduce it to 0% all the students has to be no, uh, you know only involved in the education so this is again one of the important observation then the percentage of youth not enrolled for 14 years old age so the students who falls under the or whose age is 14 years their non enrollment that means they are not gaining into the education system so there is only 3.9% of course the aim is to bring it to 0% and when you compare it to the 18 years there is a 32.6% that means there are more dropouts after 14 years 
till 18 years there are, there are more dropouts that means they are not enrolling in the next classes right so we need to give the complete education to the children that is the aim of the education so this is again uh, one more uh, important observation in class 11 or higher that means higher secondary education after 10th class more than half are enrolled in arts and humanities so approximately 55 percent they have involved or enrolled in arts and humanities that means maths physics chemistry all these are secondary and arts humanities is having majority part so important to remember girls are less likely to be enrolled in science technology engineering and mathematics stream so that again is a gender equality because general i am not stereotyping engineering like you know science and technology uh, as well as mathematics these are considered as a superior because there is more scope for research and development in the future so there are less number of girl children and there are more number of boys that means girls are being pushed into the arts and humanities background right so this is again uh, other important observation uh, we have already seen this point about uh, one in four children that means 25 percentage in the 14 to 18 age group still cannot read a standard second second class book they were not able to read fluently see the age uh, group children of 14 to 18 they they should read at least 10th class books isn't it so they are not even able to read the second class that means what there is a lack of quality in the indian education system lack of quality in the indian indian education system so we need to improve the quality across enrollment categories that means different streams different fields so girls do better than boys in their respect so whatever the outcome from the education system so the girls are outperformed uh, uh, the outperform the boys right so this is one more this is a good thing of course so if you are supporting girl children that means they are more uh, give, they, they were able to give more outcomes in terms of research and development in the future right so we need to uh, support the girl child education more than half struggle with the division three digit by one digit that means say for example 987 divided by three so more than 50 percent half has struggled to solve this three digit by one digit division that is the quality that the report has observed then about 57 percent can read sentence in english more than 73 percent among them uh, were able to tell the meanings that means what see they are english education is becoming more prominent and the uh, you know local languages or the regional languages were not able to penetrate as such so here half of the uh, students are struggling to solve the maths but 73 percent or 57 percent were able to read the english that means mass physics chemistry scientific subjects has to be enhanced boys do better than girls in both arithmetic and english reading so in the specific criteria boys have out outperformed the girls about 90 percent of sur surveyed households had smartphones that means there were more than 34,000 students has been surveyed and out of that 90 percent of uh, them has smartphones that means we have achieved the digitalization we have achieved the digitalization in india but how equality is how women or you know female children are, are getting the smartphones or within castes how equality is within religions how equality is that is not being reported still we have digitalized but there are there are difference within communities of the surveyed children almost 95 percent boys and 94 90 percent girls could use the smartphone that means they have smartphone and they were able to use it which is a good sign so these are the observations and few more uh, observation we have across all phone related tasks assigned to the respondents boy, boys outperform girls that means boys were able to use the mobile phones or the smartphones much easier way performance in digital task improved with education level that means with the increase in education level from uh, 11th class 12th class or 14 to 18 years so there was a increased performance from this particular age group the ability to perform digital tasks also increased with the basic reading so if you know the basic reading the children was able to perform well in the digital ta task close to 80 percent reported using their smartphones for entertainment so children are using most of the children are using their smartphones for entertainment as well so this is not a good thing but because uh, earlier we were using the sports for the recreation but now the smartphone smartphones are being replaced with the 
physical activity. So this is again the negative element noted by the report, right? So these are the observations uh, from the report. Uh, let's see if you have any questions. Yeah, so we'll move to the next article. Iran strikes Pakistan. So understand the issue first, then we will go for the facts. You need to understand the issue uh, for, you know, remembering for a longer period of time. So if you observe the map, here it is Pakistan and here it is Iran and here Afghanistan. Here we have India. So here this pink color we have Baluchi region. So this is a Baluchi region spread across Iran, Pakistan and a little part of Afghanistan as well. Right. So you need to understand the issue. First, the basic thing is this you understand the region that Baluch tribes spread across Iran, Pakistan and Afghanistan. Now the context we already know that they have attacked. Here background, let's see the background. Let's understand the background then you will understand the issue. We have a group Jaish ul Adil which is a Sunni militant. See within Islam uh, like how we have different sects in Hinduism, Sunni and Shias are two groups. Shias, Sunnis are two groups within Islam. In Pakistan, uh, you know, the Islamic dominated people are from Sunni community in Pakistan. And in Iran, Shias were dominating the Iran country, right? Most of the people are from Shias, right? This is uh, important to understand. Now, this Jesh ul Adal is a Sunni militant group. That means what? They are in Pakistan, they are in Pakistan and they are Sunni militant group and Baluchi separate organization. So there is a organization which you need to remember for the exam. There is a separate uh, militant group, Sunni militant group. What is their objective? That is important. Why they have launched this organization? Why this group is launched and uh, what is the objective of the group? The objective is this. They want independent Baluchistan region, all this pink color one. So they want a separate country. That means what? They want to collect the territory from Pakistan and then Iran and some part of Afghanistan as well. That is their objective. Okay. So you understood uh, Jeshul Adil group objective. Now we will move to the issue. The Baluch people, that means this pink color group, this people residing in this region. The Baluch people are ethnic group spread across Pakistan, Iran and certain part of Afghanistan that we have already seen. They has, they has been launching the attacks in the Iran from 2013. So see, understand this, then you will understand why Iran attacked the Pakistan regions. Since 2013, this Jaishul Al group has been attacking the Iran. Why? They want to capture this part, this part towards them, right? They want an independent country. So they have attacked and recently, last year, I mean 2023 December, a police station in Rask in Iran has been attacked by this particular group, right? This group has attacked Iran's territory, right? Bal Baljistan province, Rask region in Iran. It is located in the Iran and this group has attacked the Iran for sovereignty or independent country. Roughly 60 kilometers from the Pakistan border came under the attack. So that is the context. Iran claimed to have carried out retaliatory strike. That means they have already attacked previously in December 2023. Now Iran attacked Pakistan because this uh, tribe or militant group is located in the Pakistan. So they have retaliated and attacked the this group. Jaishul Adil group, they have attacked. But what is the issue here? This group is located in Pakistan and if some other country is attacking uh, some groups in other country, that means what? The sovereignty of Pakistan is being affected, right? So that's why Pakistan, you know, reflected that this is not a, uh, you know, inter... Uh, accepted under the international agreement and uh, we also will retaliate actually today they have retaliated with some attacks right so the issue has been a remained flash point in the iran pakistan relations since 2013 so this is the issue right so there is a group they want separate baluchistan they have attacked iran to capture that territory even within pakistan also they are conducting the uh, you know terrorist attacks to scare them and get the territory right after that uh, after these attacks, Iran has retaliated and here Pakistan sovereignty has been affected, right? So this is the issue and you need to know the facts related to the group and what is 
uh, the Iran, Pakistan border and how Baluch people are spread across these uh, regions. So all these facts are important. Now, next article, cervical cancer. So we'll see the context, what is, uh, why it is there in news. Central government set to roll out vaccination drive to fight cervical cancer. So this is the context. So this is why it is there in news. We'll see about what is actually cervical cancer. Then we will go with the program details. What is cervical cancer? Actually, what is cancer? See, the human body is made up of different cells, right? So your skin have cells, your eye have uh, you know, cells, your legs have cells. Every part of the body is made up of different cells. So it has to be a certain shape, certain amount of cells has to be made for human body. If there is an excess amount of cell generation from the human body, there is a out of shape. You can see different shapes from the people who are affected by cancer. So there is a enhanced or excess production of cells in the human body leading to changes in the uh, human body and there will be some, uh, you know, excess elements developed in our human body. So in that case, it is called as cancer. It is nothing but abnormal development of cells in the human body. And what is cervical cancer? It is specific uh, occurring in women's cervix. So you can see uh, it is occurring in human uh, or women body. So they are affecting especially or exclusively to women's. So you may come across this in the exam that it is exclusively affecting the women or females, right? So it is fourth most common type of cancer among the women globally. So again, important element. So this is the fourth common type of cancer. Now going little bit details about the cervical cancer. Almost all cervical cancer cases are linked to infection with human papilloma virus. Very, very important. Cervical cancer is caused by which virus they may ask. So this is the virus like how COVID we have affected by the virus. Uh, the say this particular virus is affecting the on the same way like COVID this virus is affecting the cervical part in the woman right so this is again important an extremely common virus transmitted through sexual contact so the disease can be spread through sexual contact very important so this cervical cancer can spread through sexual contact we have HPV vaccine that means human papilloma virus vaccination and secondary prevention approach like screening, treatment, uh, we have preventive measures or we have, you know, curative measure, but still, but still there are number of cases. That's why government want to promote the vaccination. When diagnosed, this cancer can easily be treated. So at the right stage, if you were able to uh, recognize the cancer in the human body, so we can easily treat it. That's why government is promoting the vaccination diagnosis, all these things, right? So this is about the cervical cancer. Now, let's see about human papilloma virus. So you may ask uh, about the campaign. So human papilloma virus vaccination campaign, we'll see the details, right? Government is set to roll out the vaccination drive among 19 to 14 years age group of women. Again, this is important. So vaccination drive is going to be launched. It hasn't launched yet. They are going to launch in the coming days. The immunization drive planned in three phases over three years likely to start from the second quarter of the year. So the second quarter of the year, it may start and they are going to do it in three phases, right? So this is about the program and few more. Besides cervical cancer, the vaccine also offers protection against HPV strains that can cause cancer in the other part. So not only in cervix, so in other parts also, if there is a cervical cancer, so this vaccination can be cured. Currently, two doses of HPV vaccine is available. So in how many doses one need to treat with the HPV vaccine? It is in two dose and commercially, it is of 2000 rupees per dose. That means 4000 has to be spent. And poor people, you, you can understand, uh, it is very difficult to even spend 100 rupees, 200 rupees, even fighting. Uh, we have, uh, you know, 20% people fighting for daily food. So it is a very huge economical cost. If government come up with this vaccination drive, that means it will be give, given with the free of cost, right? So the vaccination name, Cervac, very important, is an indigenously developed vaccine. So HPV vaccination is known as Cervac and it is developed indigenously by Serum Institute, which also developed the COVID vaccines, right? So this is the details about the campaign. Now, next other uh, fourth article, we have 12th General Assembly of 
Asian Buddhist Conference for Peace. So the context is this. Vice President of India has inaugurated 12th General Assembly of the Asian Buddhist Conference for Peace. Right? So this is the context. Let's see if there are any doubts from the students. Right. We'll move ahead. So the 12th General Assembly of the Asian Buddhist Conference of for the peace was recently inaugurated by the Vice President. We'll see the facts relevant for our exam. So this is about the Buddhist only. So that is the clue from the image. About Asian Buddhist Conference, see whenever there is a news in the uh, newspapers, they won't ask about this conference itself. They won't ask where it has happened. Yes, they may ask, but they may also ask the background. What is Asian Buddhist Conference? where it has emerged, how it is working. That's how the questions are framed. They are not going to directly ask you the context, but the associated facts are also important for our exam, even for UPSC. So that's how the questions are framed. So Asian Buddhist Conference for Peace was actually founded in 1970. So the first inauguration was happened in 1970, way, way back, and Ulaanbaatar, Ulaanbaatar, Mongolia. So it has happened in Mongolia, the followers of Buddhism. So they have launched in 1970, the followers of Buddhism in Mongolia. All these facts are very important. Now it is headquartered at Gandan Tenchan in uh, you know, Mongolia, Ulaanbaatar. So this is the headquarters. So you can just remember where it is located. See this conference is happening in India. That's why if it is happening in some other country, we, we no need to read. But it is happening in India. That's why the question can be asked. And you, you know inaugurated by Vice President. This assembly embodies the profound aspiration. So what is the objective of this particular group? They want to promote the elements of Buddhism. So what Lord Buddha has taught, the peace, right? So all these things they want to promote across the world. That is the objective of the group, right? These are the facts. Next, about this year, General Assembly, that is also important. The theme, ABCP, that means the full form, the Buddhist voice of Global South. So global south means the developing countries or the underdeveloped countries. So this is the theme very important to remember. Buddhist voice for global south and venue. It is in, it is happening in New Delhi again important. Third conference already happened in New Delhi. So in 1974, third conference of ABCP has already happened in New Delhi. That means in India. So this is not the first time. So they may ask in the statement form that this is the first conference happened in India. No, it is second time already happened. Okay. During the Fakhruddin Ali Ahmad presidential ship in India. Right. So this is the fact. Next fifth article, Cyber Surakshit Bharat Initiative. So we'll see the context. National e-governance division organized 41st information security officers deep drive training program under the initiative. So this, this is why it is there in news. It was collected from Press Information Bureau, PIB. No other newspaper has covered. So that's why very important. The questions the examiners are framing, not directly from newspapers. They may also collect from international websites or government websites, which are not covered by the newspaper. That's why, uh, that's how they trap the students. So this is covered from the PIB, not covered in Hindu or Indian Express and any other newspaper. So this is the context. Now, about the Cyber Swatch Bharat initiative, the questions can be, uh, you know, come from this particular initiative. It is an initiative of METI, that means Ministry of Electronics and Information. So that is important. And why they have launched this initiative? It aims to spread awareness about the cyber crime. See, there are a lot of cyber crimes at the digital platforms like mobiles or laptops in various situations. So they want to bring awareness among the people and the officials in the government itself. So they want to enhance the capacity of chief information security officers and frontier IT officials across all the government uh, departments. See, we have uh, attacks in the ISRO, even ISRO, uh, some of the uh, departments were attacked by the cyber, uh, you know, cr criminals few years back. And even in Kodankulam uh, nuclear power plant, even in Mumbai electric grid. So there are many events. So how we can uh, how we can ensure that we can tackle these things. They want to make awareness about the, among the individuals who are involved in various departments, right? So that is the objective. It is an initiative to fortify cyber security system in India. 
So they want to fortify, that means strengthen the cyber security division across the departments. That is the objective, right, of the scheme and ministry you have already noted. That is Ministry of Electronics and Information. Now about National E-Governance Division. So the who is conducting this? This particular division is conducting this workshop. So again the question can be asked about the National E-Governance Division. So it was launched in 2009 by Ministry of Electronic and Technology, Information Technology as an independent business division under Digital India Corporation. So Digital India we are promoting by the, I mean the government. So under that there is an independent business division. So this is an independent division under Digital India Corporation. Again important. Since 2009, NEGD, that means National E-Governance uh, Division, has been playing pivotal role in assisting various departments. Not only in the central government, but the state governments, the private organization, they are collecting the information and they are disseminating it to the various departments how to tackle the cyber crimes. So this is the objective of NED and the facts related to this particular NED. Then the next one, the Indian International Science Festival. So it is again happening in India. That's why we are doing, of course, it is, it happens in India only. So International Science Festival 2023 was inaugurated by Union Minister of State Science and Technology, right? So they have launched it. This is also collected from PAB. No other uh, newspaper has covered this. Very important. Let's see about the details. First, before knowing 2023 edition, let's know about the background of Indian International Science Festival. So this is an initiative by Ministry of Science and Ministry of uh, Earth Science. So Ministry of Science and Technology and Ministry of Earth Science. So two ministries are involved in association with the Vijnana Bharati. So it is a private organization or movement. So this is the organizations involved and who is leading this? eminent scientists from across India. So all the scientists will come together and they will discuss how research and development can be conducted or how they can also enhance the youth scientific temper. So all these things will be discussed. The platform brings together students, public researchers. So everyone can come together and share their knowledge with regard to science and technology, right? The first Indian International Science Festival has happened in 2015 in New Delhi, right? So this is again important, very important, 2015. So this is not the first edition. This is the ninth edition. We will see the edition also. Now about this year edition, we will see that is ninth edition. First one happened in 2015. That is important to remember. It is happening at Translational, Translational Health Science and Technology Institute in Faridabad, Haryana. So this is important. Where does international, Indian International Science Festival has happened in 2023 that is happening in Haryana. This year theme is science and technology public outreach in Amrit Kal. So this is the theme. Theme also has to be remembered many times in UPSC or even uh, many other state PS exams they have asked themes every year. You can see a lot of questions on themes. So this is the theme and this is the ninth edition. So that is also important. Next there are two factual points. There is an advancing climate resilient ag agri food systems conclave which is happening in New Delhi. Right? It is organized by FAO, Niti Aayog, and Ministry of Agriculture. So they may ask who has uh, you know organizing advancing climate resilient agri, agri food systems in India 2023. So Niti Aayog, Ministry of Agriculture and Food and Agriculture Organization. And why they are conducting this conclave? They want to discuss investment and partnership strategy to advance climate resilient agriculture systems that means what even after increasing in the heat uh, you know increasing in floods so we need to resilient the crops need to resilient that's how we can promote the food security that is the objective so these are the two facts that you can remember and one more thing government of india launched two flagship programs very very important fact especially when you are writing the lower uh, level of exams like factual exams so this is very important center for excellence in Intelligence of Internet Things. Internet of Things means what? So it includes all artificial intelligence, uh, biodata, so everything they will include. And the machines will do your work without even your, uh, you know, efforts. So that is the IOT. So Center for Excellence in Intelligence of Internet Things. And India's first graphene center. India's first graphene center. India Innovation Center for Graphene was launched in Kochi. 
Macar village, Kochi in Kerala. Very important. This too has been launched in Kochi, Kerala. So these are the facts uh, from today's PIB. Now, let's see some practice questions. So you have listened the class now. You have already listened the class. Let's practice. So we will see, we will consider some previous year questions as well as some practice questions which we created ourselves with reference to annual status of education report 2023. 2023, consider the following statement. So as sir, we have already done. It is an annual survey that aims to provide reliable estimates of children enrollment, basic learning levels, each district and state in India. This is a very general statement. That is the objective of ASR report. So you can take one as uh, correct. So statement, or you can eliminate option B. That's how you need to answer in the exam also. It is a school-based survey conducted every year in rural areas. See, I have stressed this one. It is not a school-based, but household-based. Household-based. So second statement stands wrong. So second, you can eliminate. So now we are left with statement three. Annual status of education report 2023. The data related to, okay, release the data related to the age group of 16, 6 to 14 years they are telling. So what is 2023 report age group they have covered 14 to 18. So this is also wrong. So answer is D, right? So this is the one question. Next, Baluchi region spreads across which of the following countries? Pakistan, yes. So uh, answer should this should be eliminated. Iran, yes. Then Afghanistan, yes. Certain part of Afghanistan is also covered the Baluchi tribe. We have seen that pink image. Then one more uh, question. Human papilloma virus vaccination used to cure for which of the following diseases? So which diseases we have seen? Cervical cancer or any other cancers? Not hepatitis, tuberculosis or diphtheria. Only cancer. Right? So this is how the questions are framed. These are the current affairs that were covered from Hindu Indian Express and PIB and various other websites. Only relevant, which are relevant for our exams are being collected and being discussed here. Okay. Let's see if there are any questions. Yeah. If you have any questions, you can ask. If not, then we will end the session. Okay, thank you everyone. So, uh, thank you for your patience and we'll come up with the daily uh, current affairs. So, keep following and keep subscribing. Thank you.